It's time now for the Sports Objective Podcast. No talking heads, just guys who love sports. Here's Dave Rich. Welcome into the Sports Objective. What a what a great night. I'm so excited. I've been waiting all day long for this great event. As we look back at one of the biggest games ever in college football history. And so excited. I've been waiting all day long for this great event. As we look back at one of the biggest games ever in college football history. And so excited. I've been waiting all day long for this great event. There's Father Rosenbaum with the extra audio again. No, that's not me. You get a lot of feedback. Hey, if one of you guys have got a second round for us on YouTube or Facebook, you need to close it out. You get a lot of feedback. If one of you guys have got a second round for us on YouTube or Facebook, you need to close it out. Yes, it's not me, Dave. Okay. If one of you guys clicked the link earlier to the YouTube or Facebook page about the stream yard, you still have it open. You need to close it out. That's where that feedback's got to be coming from. Yeah, because I don't have it. You need to close it out. Libiano. <laughs> we got it. Or Emac. Dude, I'm here. Hey, there's there's Liviana. Let's go. Emac, dude. Yeah, it's Emac. All right. Well, let's Bubba, get it we done, saying, dude. Let's go. That's right. Let's go. Hey, Bubba, that we got a very special show, and Kyle, very excited to relive one of the biggest games there ever in the history of pirate football. Very excited to have these guys look back at the 1995 Liberty Bowl. Yeah, very excited to take a look back at that 95 Liberty Bowl 1913 victory over Stanford. Um, we finished the business, uh, as we'll talk to these guys about. Of course, the year before, we have gone seven and five, but, uh, come up short in the Liberty Bowl against Illinois. So it was all about finishing the business, getting back to the Liberty Bowl and uh, and uh, winning it this time. And we, we certainly did um, just a tremendous effort by the Pirate defense that day. And we'll, we have three guys from the defensive side of the ball we're going to be talking to tonight. Um, cornerback Emmanuel McDaniel, linebacker Mark Libiano, and also uh, – Safety, Darren Hart. Hey guys, welcome in. Thanks hey, how you doing? Us. Great. We're uh, very excited to have you on. What a great, great game. Bring it back, Emac. What's up, Emac? Hey, and, how you uh, doing? How's it going? Great. We're uh, very excited to have you on. What a great, great game. Bring it back, Emac. What's up, Emac? Hey, and, how you doing? Uh, how's it going? Yeah, we got a delay. Excited to have you all. What a great, great game. Bring back Emac. What's up, Emac? Yeah, we got a delay. We still got a double round reluctant somewhere, guys. Yeah. We still got a double round reluctant somewhere, guys. Somebody's got a double, two browsers open. <laughs> yep. Yeah, not me, Dave, I promise. Somebody's got a double two browsers up. <laughs> Not me, Dave, I promise. Does somebody have a phone that you have it on as well? A phone maybe on your smartphone you have it on up? Not me, Dave, I promise. Uh, no phone. Do you have it on as well? A phone maybe on your smartphone you have it on? Not me, Dave, I promise. Bo, mute, mute everybody one at a time and we'll figure out who it is. Mute. Hey, um. Bo, mute, mute everybody one Oh, seems like it was Emac. I don't know. Me? I, I, it may not be. I just 
I stopped hearing the sound when I muted you. I don't know. <laughs> Bluetooth, Bluetooth bothered. I, man, I, it may not be. I just I stopped hearing the sound when I muted you. I don't know. <laughs> Bluetooth, Bluetooth bothered. I, man, I, it may not be. I just I stopped hearing the sound when I muted you. I don't know. Hold on, let me turn the Bluetooth off. Bluetooth bothered. I, man, I, it may not be. I just, the sound when I mean you all that. Hold on, let me turn the Bluetooth off. Bluetooth bottle. Hold on, let me turn the Bluetooth off. Bluetooth bottle. I'm gonna turn the whole side off. Hold on, let me turn the Bluetooth off. Turn everything off down there. All right, we're we're off to a great In the start. Meantime, there he is. Hey, Chad, what's up? Hey, what's up? All right, wow, what a another great pirate there, Chad Holcomb, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very happy to have him. A lot of great pirates here tonight. And he's uh, dancing on the ceiling there. <laughs> hey, Chad, Mark said you're making all the money. There's Liv. There's, yeah. Liv. There's Hart. What's up? Darren Hart said he's making all the money. Okay, sorry. How are you doing? <laughs> the, Man, Darren still has the, Look, there's a little, little a microphone that says off. He can't figure out how to keep talking yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, he had me muted, boy. <laughs> I'll mute myself. Hold He's on. smart. <clears throat> well, we've been getting a lot of feedback. We've been trying to figure out where it's coming from. Sounds it like an EMAC. EMAC. Definitely EMAC. EMAC. But I it, love it EMAC. It's in the mansion. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, boat, over here to boat. EMAC, we'll bring you back oh, in. Wow. Look at look that. Look. I'm living large. Right right hey, hey, EMAC, if you can hear us, man, close out all your stuff, everything. And then just reopen the, the, the text link. Exactly. Chad, you fishing, man? No, I'm just drinking beer. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> With your winning kicker, you can do that, man. You can do that. I don't, how many how many field goals did he hit? Oh, I, I think it was four. Yeah, four. He hit four. Four. four, four, four. Right, guys. Well, now that uh the technical difficulties have been solved, and we've embarrassed ourselves uh, soundly for our audience. So you guys ready to start uh, watching the 95 Liberty Ball? Go ahead. Let's roll it. Let's go, as Mark would say. Let's go. Roll it, man. Roll it. Let's go. Let's roll the uh, Darren Hart interception. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. while uh, Kyle's getting the game going, uh, let's just take it. I'm, I'm missing as far as uh, the previous year, seven and five, but we lost the Liberty Bowl, and then obviously that motto um, coming from that uh, to finish the business. We just talk about the mindset and everything going into that '95 season. Who you want to take? Is Aaron? Go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, after after the '95, uh, well, the '94, I think it was '94 season, we got embarrassed at. Uh, Illinois, and um, we we kind of took that to heart and uh, came up with a, um, a, a, a a a motto of no no uh, no excuses or what what was it? Um, no excuses, I think. And an unfinished business. That's what it was. Unfinished business, and uh, we took that attitude uh, throughout the off season and came back um, in '95 and finished the business. So we started that right after we lost and got embarrassed by Illinois. Um, everybody went back that summer and, uh, you know, Coach Connors, you know, made some shirts that uh, said unfinished business. And uh, we was fortunate enough to get back to the Liberty Bowl 
and uh, finish the business that we started. Yeah, and if you're looking on the screen right now, guys, we're doing highlights from the 95 season as uh, now we are live from the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, and by the way, for, for, for Facebook purposes, uh, this is copyright ESPN, East Carolina University, the Liberty Bowl in Stanford. We are not profiting from this at all. Not at all. But Guys, uh, thank you so much for coming in tonight. In fact, I'm going to drop out a little bit. So when you want to bring in EMAC now? Yeah, I'll we'll come do. back in a little bit. All right, guys. To be fair to EMAC, I uh, love you guys, but I want to, all you guys to be able to talk uh, during the game. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll be back. Dave, right, you want to hang in for a moment. EMAC, EMAC's not signed back in yet. So. Okay. Well, let me. when he does, just let me know. It's all, all right. Good. Well, uh, like you were saying, Darren, um, that, that uh, motto of unfinished business. And so that 95 season, we started off. Um, obviously, the Pirates were – known for playing challenging non-conference schedules and um, being an independent th at that time. Um, so um, you, you had the likes of a Tennessee, a Syracuse, um, a game which we came back from down 21 nothing and won, but we had started the season three and three, and then we won six straight to close the year. So just talk about how uh, I think it was after that Cincinnati game where we were three and three. Um, we really got on a roll in that Southern Miss win uh, where Chad hit the last second field goal after the fake. Uh, that was right. ab absolutely huge with the no game. <laughs> well, well, actually, and a, and a lot of people don't don't know this, but we played Illinois also early in the year, and we yeah. lost to them seven to nothing or something like that. But it was real close, and uh, we knew then that we we was gonna have a pretty good year. And then uh, once we uh, got the miracle in uh, the one, the one team we couldn't get past was uh, Southern Miss. They embarrassed us at home one time on ESPN on a Thursday night. It, it was awful, and uh, we we was able to uh, knock them off with a last second field goal. And and Scott Harley was doing flips, and I mean it was pandemonium. And and we we had our mojo back for for the uh, '95 season. Yeah, do you remember? Uh, you remember faking that field goal uh, against Southern Miss, and then uh, of course pass interference call. Then you turn around and make the game winner. That was Chad. Yeah, he. Yeah, yeah he's he's gonna he's coming back to us. He's okay. gonna come back to us because a little yeah. choppy for him. <laughs> yeah, we we I, I, we know that Chad can kick. I mean, he he kicks him in practice all the time. Yeah. And um, we we just had a lot of faith in them, but you know I was on the ground, you know, two knees praying that it, it hit. But um, once it went through, man, it, it was definitely a a sense of uh, relief because we we would always have winning seasons, but we couldn't get past Southern Miss for some reason. Southern Miss was our, our, our Achilles' heel, but this year we actually got past. It. That was so awesome yeah, too. Yeah, Someone yeah, that time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, something else is, as far as uh, seems like Mark stepped away for a moment. Uh, something I was going to ask Chad is, um, this, I saw the game starting, and I, I know uh, I, I'd gone back and rewatched a little bit of it preparing for this. And uh, let's see, I think Chad uh, here's the email, but. Um, Stanford, Stanford had a huge turnaround that year. They were one of the nation's top stories. Uh, first year head coach and Tyrone Willingham, who was from Eastern North Carolina, a Jacksonville native, or at least he had grown up there part of his childhood. So talk, talk about things when you had gone to, to Memphis and um, from having EMAC on the program before, EMAC had really said that uh, there's a lot of disrespect from Stanford. Go ahead, Mark. The phone is so much better. Did you, did you hear that question, Mark? And just um, going into the game, you were talking no. about how, how Stanford had disrespected us with, um, you know, Coach Tyrone Willingham being from East North Carolina, being from Jacksonville. Um, I just remember EMAC saying that there had not been a lot of respect from the Cardinals toward the Pirates. Well, I don't, I don't know if that was just uh, Stanford coach. I think it was more or less basically everyone we played, and that was where a lot of the people that uh, we played, we didn't, we didn't really um, understand that this was going to happen. But 
they, they <laughs> respect a lot of us. They, they never realized how good we were. And, and that's kind of the rally cry that we actually kind of came. It is. It's right there. Uh, through between. I know, but I can't see it. You guys, you if you up. see the, the next couple of years, that's what basically happened. But it might. The Peach Bowl team was <laughs> one of the thought. teams that actually put ECU on the map. No, okay. And then our class with Mac and the rest of the guys. Darren, David, um, the rest of the guys said, this is what we're doing. We're solidifying who we are. We played great football. We had a lot of people that knew how to play football. So I, I think what happened was in that Liberty Bowl game, uh, they just thought they were going to show up and win the game because they were Stanford. But at the end of the day, just like South Carolina, I don't know, uh, Syracuse and the rest of the teams realized that, you're going to play the game. If you're not playing, you're going to lose. So I, I think a lot of those teams actually realized what was going on. And I think Stanford thought they were just going to show up and win the game. But at the end of the day, they then and the rest of the three, four years from then, we didn't lose big games. So it was just one of those things that uh, we were just in one of those uh, predicaments that uh, we had some good players. We got Guys like Chad to just literally after his junior year, he just all he did was kick field goals. Um, to the, to this day, right now, man, like I like watching some of the games and just be like, here, here's the heart twins. Here you go, you're gonna get hit, man. And if you go back in some of those games, that's all they talk about is Darren and David. They couldn't figure out who's who, who's hitting what, but someone's getting hit. And that's how we brought the. Um, brought the football to the table man it was just like no matter what happened and you know it goes back to the Syracuse game I was thinking about the other day we 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 got to the Syracuse game and we were I don't know second third game and I'm like okay Donovan McNabb and the receivers and all that other stuff and here you go here's the bomb touchdown here's the bomb touchdown and next thing you know we're looking at Emac and we're like Emac Dude, what are you doing? Take care of this stuff. And he's like, dude, I got it. You're like, dude, you got you, you really got it, or you almost got it. He's like, I got it. They didn't score the second half. We were down 21 to nothing in the first half and won the game 24 to nothing. That, that just shows you what kind of character all our friends, all our guys that played football had. The young guys, the freshmen, the seniors, and everyone. Yeah, so we talk about the Syracuse game. Uh, I remember watching that on TV. See you guys get down uh, twenty-one nothing and come back. Oh, huge win at the time. Uh, kind of catapulted us into a fourteen eight three season and the trip to the uh, Liberty Bowl here. Now I say it's you way before you were a kid. But that that was part of our character, though, you know, like E Mac. <clears throat> The Hart Twins, MoFo, everyone, the kids, the young kids. I mean, you got freshmen that shouldn't even be playing or playing or playing their hearts out. And okay, just everyone. Know. So, I mean, yeah. Darren can speak a little bit about how do you do it. And, I mean, it was just, it's just a good, fun game, and we all had our backs. And, and then the kids that were coming in. The guys that were freshmen, sophomores, I mean, they got, these guys were playing on special teams and let us actually get what we needed to do, get our breath and, and figure it out. I mean, we played Auburn. I think they Auburn beat us like 28-7 or something. I don't, I don't know what the statistic was, but at the end of the day, they were throwing bombs with two minutes to go to run up the score, and yet – you know, we're just little old East Carolina playing at twenty-eight to seven or something like that. So, Darren, you you remember yeah. that score? From yeah, the yeah. It, it, I think it was uh, twenty. It was you about right, twenty-eight seven. Yeah. And we lost to Tennessee. Um, we lost to Tennessee that year. Twenty-seven. Probably the same same score. Um, well, but, Auburn, uh, Auburn was ninety-four. Wasn't it? Yeah. Auburn. Yeah, but but see, all of those schools, all of those games that we played. Uh, Auburn, the big schools, uh, Virginia Techs and Syracuse, that prepared us for the 95 season. 
So when you look at Stanford, they're thinking that they're big, a big team, and playing, you know, playing uh, teams like Virginia Tech's fullback because they ran the ball back then. That kind of prepared us for the for the Stanford uh, running game. So we already knew that teams couldn't run against us because we played like a gap sound defense. Everybody responsible for your gap, and um, we we definitely had a great D line. It is. Our D-line really held, held gaps. Uh, you had the double team, uh, Darden and, uh, you know, Lamont and all them guys that we had before he went over the offense. You had to double team a lot of our kids. I mean, Rod Coleman, I mean, you had kids that can actually defeat defeat uh, single blocks. So that really helped us uh, uh, <laughs> against Stanford because they were really a running team with Butterfield. Um, they ran the ball and they had a, a real fast tailback. We knew they had a real fast tailback, but I think uh, Selena, Selena, something like that, yeah. was the big fullback. And um, I, we knew that they were going to smash him off the ball, uh, try to establish the run, but that's kind of what we were built on, stopping the run. So uh, even even teams like Auburn and uh, Tennessee, and they, they still couldn't run the ball on us. Uh, teams had to beat us through the air because we kind of made them. We shut down the run against any school we played in the country. Well, you talk about the run. Syracuse, you know, always ran the option with Dominic and Mav. So, uh, yeah. you know, right there, he shut them down in the second half. Um, going back to 94 and that Auburn East Carolina game that you guys were talking about a minute ago, am I remembering right? It's, you know, I, I was, I'm, I'm a little younger than you guys. I was, about 14 when that game was played. Um, did Logan, am I remembering right, did Logan and Terry Bowden have words after that game? <laughs> yeah. I, you didn't have I, any words? I, 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 like, like, like Libo said, they were throwing bombs uh, <laughs> at the end of the game to try to – want. They, they had the game won, but they started throwing bombs. And uh, I'm pretty sure Logan did wasn't uh, – you know, wasn't happy about that, but uh, I, I'm not sure about words. But you know, if you, I wouldn't put it past uh, Logan though. <laughs> let, me, let me be. Let me be explicit. Let me. Let me tell you exactly what happened. The game. <laughs> he threw about three or four bombs on Emac in the last. I don't know, two or three minutes, and they had the ball. And they were all. I forget who the receiver was, but at the end of the day. We were running out to shake hands, and <laughs> Coach Logan was like, "No, nope, get back in the, get back in there, get back in the, get back in the um, locker rooms. We're not shaking any hands." And I remember walking off. Um, Bobby Bowden yelling at me, "Was it Bobby or the son? I, I forget who it was." Terry. He's like, "You're not going to shake any hands." And I just looked at him. I'm like, "Dude, 2814, and you're throwing bombs with two minutes to go. All you had to do was kneel on it." So that was one of Logan's quirky things which uh we actually liked so we actually fed off some of those things like that but uh but that just shows you though 2814 2817 it, it was one of those things where it's like you know they they that year they were 12 and 0 Penn State was 12 and 0 and Nebraska was like 12 and 0 yeah and uh, Auburn, Auburn was Auburn was on probation, so yeah. we, we had a good time. We had fun. We competed. We made sure everything. Darren, were you there when we played Washington? Yes. Oh, Bino yeah. Bryant, Bino. Yes. We got we killed. That we got killed against Washington. What's that? We got killed against Washington. What? What's the the, the running back that we? Napoleon Kaufman. Oh yeah, Napoleon, Napoleon man. Kaufman. He yeah. No, Napoleon was good. Who was the tackle that was really good? Sure, I'm glad you dealt with him, but I <laughs> we we trying to we we trying to contain Napoleon. Well, uh, hey. but see, but see, here's the thing. Even even that, even Napoleon Kaufman, he didn't get a lot of yard rushing yeah. yards against him. He he didn't have one of his breakout games against us, but they killed us really. Uh, the difference in that game was uh, our offense wasn't ready for that that type of defense. 
Well, I, I don't think we crossed the fifty yard line. Yeah, that's what I was no. gonna say, Darren. As far as that Washington game, uh, I remember listening to it. I guess I was like twelve years old, but just the way we couldn't move the ball at all. The, the defense actually played pretty well that day. Um, um, what y'all gave up? Probably less than three hundred yards for total offense. Right, right. I remember that, and um, that I mean, like I said, nobody in the country, and and people can say from walks of life. I think Florida was the big school back then. Um, they nobody can say they could run the ball on us. You know, uh, I think our coaches did a good job bringing in linebackers that can actually play downhill, and we actually had size uh, at linebacker to to actually go against a lot of these schools. So when Logan started recruiting size. Um, that changed the whole game as far as our defense at East Carolina as a whole. Right now, we'd like to welcome in the other heart, uh, David. And David, we appreciate you joining us. How y'all guys doing? Doing well. That's what Mark said. That uh, said uh, you've been in hiding out there doing your uh, social distancing with COVID. Oh yeah, man. I'm, uh, we got a movie studio in the house. So I'm I'm kind of just in the background. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you joining us. Um, had some technical difficulties to say the least early on, but uh, I know we have Lamont Burns chiming in, also Shane McPherson, Marvin Burke, uh, a lot of your former teammates. Uh, so uh, Lamont says, speak on what may have been the greatest ECU game ever when we beat Southern Miss at Southern Miss on, on the fake field goal. Oh, that was a beautiful game, now. That's the miracle right there, man. Chad, he, he, he kind of got, got us through that. Now, and, and he, looking at this game, that. hey, chiming in, looking at this game, they were trying to get the ball to the fullback um, a lot. And, and and we know we knew on this third down play, I knew that I knew I was gonna intercept it before the play happened. Because if, if you blitz Mark Libiano, he's gonna get there faster than Marvin Burke, uh, Carlos Brown, and some of the other boys because he, you know he just he just had a knack for getting there. So I figured when he blitzed, I already knew they were gonna try to throw the ball to the tight end. So I was able to kind of play play that through my mind, and I and I dreamed about me intercepting a, a pass and running for a touchdown. I just wish Squeaky would have blocked for me so I could have walked in the end zone. But, uh, <laughs> I, I was like you were running out of gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't never ran that far. <laughs> how, how many how many pick six did you have in your career? Uh that was just one. You know, you probably had to talk to Emac with the with scoring. You know, I, I, I wasn't fast know. enough to score. I, 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 had, I ended up with 12, so I, I had a good career with interception, but I wasn't going to take nothing back to the house. <laughs> Not without no oxygen. He would have needed an oxygen mask or something. <laughs> so let, let me let me answer the question. That, that was probably a 20, 30-yard interception return. That's, that's all Darren could do. That's it. So that, like, that's it. If you watch that thing, he barely made it to the touchdown. Yes, the email, you're absolutely dude, right. I like it. Hey, I'm trying to see you. I think there's a, Sorry, Mark. There's an e e Emacs says. There's a play that you guys don't Yeah, realize. you're catching up with you there. You guys catching you. What are you, what are your teammates scheduling you from behind? Yeah, that was, that was, uh, uh, we call him Squeaky, man. They, he didn't block. No, he was trying to, he was trying to outrun you like you were racing. Hey, he, hey, he, he was able to go to. I think he ended man? up going to San Francisco. He had NFL speed. <laughs> but I, I always <laughs> tell people, football is a game of angles. Yep. And thank God for the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> yep, definitely. Hey, but. Yes. Uh, but but Darren uh, Emac chimed in. Uh, obviously, Emac will hopefully be joining us here. Um, he's watching right now, but he'll be back on the screen here in a little bit. But but he said, uh, "What are you talking about? That you did run that far? How about the three hundred? Yeah, yeah. This this team we did. We had a, a three hundred um, a test that we did in the summertime, and uh, 
Coach Connors uh, usually have us run that when we get back to uh, see if we was in condition or whatnot. And um, it was very, I, I would say, tough to uh, meet the demands that uh, Coach uh, Connors put on us as far as running those 300s. And basically a 300 is just running around the whole football field and making it in a, a certain amount of time. And, um, yeah, so uh, he had certain times for each uh, position group or whatnot, and uh, that really kind of gave us the mindset that we can run with anybody in the country because if you did those 300s, you, you definitely could uh, run with anybody in the country. Yeah, you guys were definitely well conditioned back in those days. I mean, really all the way through uh, the, the first run of Connor's days here, um, the, the teams were always so well conditioned, never gave out in the fourth quarter, come back on people. I mean, nobody was going to out condition us back, in the, back then. Yeah, well, with Coach with Coach uh, Logan, he, he had the old saying, the last play of the game. So yeah. – we, I, we, I always thought, why can't we blow teams out the first quarter, you know? But it seemed like he knew more than we did because we would always play tough games and win them at the last play of the game. So that's kind of how we lived our career. He, he conditioned us to, he conditioned us to have the offense get the ball with two minutes left on the in the game, and they go down to win the game. And I guess that come back from the Peach Bowl years, but we yep. always believed that if we could get the, the offense the ball at the end of the game with a chance to win, we believe we was going to win it. Well, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a good mentality because if if you believe that, then you never think you're out of a game. You, when you get exactly. down, you're going to So, so guys. Do me a favor. You guys are statistical geeks, and I, and I and I appreciate that. And I'm not saying it as a bad thing, but if you go back, our, our freshman, my freshman year, I think we had like after the Peach Bowl, Peach Bowl, I come in. I think we had like ten turnovers, and we're like, I don't know, five and five. The next year, we're two and nine. I think I don't know. We need like four turnovers. My junior year, we went seven and four, seven and five. We had 33 turnovers. 33 yeah. or 34 turnovers. My senior year of old game, we had another 34, 35 turnovers. That's a big difference. That's that's putting your offense just grinding yeah. the ball, doing what they did. Yeah, if, if you will. Uh, off the field. And people don't realize, like, Logan actually played that. There's a, some there's some difference that I had with Logan, but at the end of the day, man, he just hand the ball off, grind it down, do what he needed to do, and at the end of the day, threw the ball over there, touchdown, we won the game. So it's, it's a big difference, man. Yeah, yeah Mark, yeah, like ball still that way. Like you're saying, I noticed that earlier on. I was watching a little bit of the game this morning, and uh, they put that graphic on the screen. I don't know if it was. 93, 94, 95, I guess, because um, we had four 33 turnovers in each of those three seasons, which was, which was just remarkable because, like you're saying, uh, one of those years, 93, we only played 11 games, and then the next two, we played 12. Yeah, I, I like we, to say in our era, we, we were actually a defensive team, and that's unheard of for ECU because they, they are so known – for putting up a lot of points, but during our tenure, we we were actually a defensive team. Ball control. So, uh, so guys, and you see what Emmanuel says there. Uh, he says Stanford never changed anything. They thought we were stupid. They changed nothing. We watched them. <laughs> oh yeah, guys. Um, talking about the, uh, the this era here, and you're watching this game. And, of course, uh, these uniforms go all the way back kind of, I guess, to like 89. But these uniforms to me, uh, along with the the black uniform during the 2013-2014 season under Coach McNeil, these uniforms and the black uniform from circa 2013, without a doubt, are, are our two best uniforms of all time. Oh, no question. We they, they look so pretty. We didn't need to change a thing. I don't yeah, know what great. Timeless. <laughs> and um, 
Guys, if you recall, this hey, is, hey, let's go back to win some more games. This is the same uniform um, that Auburn continues to wear to this day as far as where the stripes are and just the yeah. way it looks. Just obviously, obviously orange and uh, blue instead of purple and gold. But but otherwise, this, yeah. this uniform that Auburn's been wearing for 30 or 40 years. Yeah, we, we definitely in a guys, new era. A idea. Yeah, we, we're definitely in a new era where they got the swords on the pants and the cross and everybody doing. We went from here to the, the here to we, we, we definitely uh, have changed. And, um, you know, I think we went with Adidas instead of Nike or something like that. But, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, that I mean, everybody's branding now. That's, that's like the new thing now in, uh, in football. No, and, and, and that's all right because yeah. it's just money coming in from Adidas. But I'd love to see us uh, do a throwback of this uniform, at least for a game or two. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I love I, – yeah, with the ECU, it made us look – with the ECU yeah. uh, in that little – it made us look like we always running. That's what I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> but look, uh, I love it. i tell you what. For those uniforms, we won a lot of games, so why not go back to it for a throwback yeah. game or more? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, look at that. That Emac was talking about uh, Stanford's quarterback Butterfield. You guys are calling him Buttercup. Yeah, oh, we yeah. we yeah yeah no question. We was we were calling them out. Um, they they just thought they were bigger than we were, and they just gonna smash in them out. And uh, that that wasn't gonna happen. Um, but we we always called out the uh, other team uh, quarterback. You know, I remember playing Peyton Manning. And he's sitting up there checking, and I'm like, you know, hey, Peyton, you know, uh, talking to him, normal. But uh, he he then he was a freshman then, but he eventually became, you know, a great player, college player, and uh, uh, definitely an all star in the NFL. But I remember playing him and Nash and all them guys. Uh, we played some good Dante Cole Pepper. We played we played some a lot of quarterbacks uh, in our time. Yeah, like we were saying earlier, um, I remember that 95 game against Syracuse, uh, Donovan McNabb, when we fell behind 21 nothing and we came back and won 27-24 uh, maybe or 24-21. Yeah, they, they beat us on some big plays, and we knew that. So when we went into half, it was like, okay, take away their big plays, and they couldn't run the ball. I think the running back name was Dardar or something like that. Yeah. Kirby Dar Dar. Yeah, and, and that was what I had on the back of my jersey. Dar Hart, right? So I was like, nah, nah this this dude ain't gonna make too many plays. But uh Donovan McNabb and them, they they hit a couple of plays early. They got up on us, but uh we knew if uh we just had that mindset of, of the Steve Logan, you know, last play of the game, if we get to the fourth quarter, and uh I think that game he actually told us what was gonna happen the second half. Before it happened, and they actually started doing going there, and then we like, man, this dude was a psychic or something. He said, "We're gonna go out here, and we're gonna run it out there through." <laughs> and 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 he would he would he would kind of give us some type of uh, scenario with, and I'm pretty sure he did the same thing against the Miami game. Yeah. Cause we went in the locker room, and uh, we down against Miami in um uh, in, in at NC State when the storm came. Yeah, and um, we were down in Miami the same way, and he, he, he pretty much told the team what was going to happen the second half before it happened, and the kids just believed in it. And we, this, we was, this was after we ripped into him. Yeah, because yeah. we we kind of was in the stands that game, and we were a little upset because we weren't playing ETU football. So me and, and Darren and a couple of guys, we we kind of went in the locker room. And we chewed everybody out. And it was kind of crazy because none of the coaches said anything. They were all quiet. And they just let us rip into all the players. And after we finished, then Logan um, kind of spoke. And then we went out to, to win the game. But it was one of those things where we were doing all the talking. And the coaches were just like, you know, this we're not playing like ECU play. And uh, a lot of those guys, to, to a man, they will let you guys know that uh, that was one of the reasons that kind of 
click that light switch on to to let them come out and have a, a awesome second half. Yeah. Hey, you got David. Hey, you talk about playing. David so earlier. You guys here's talk about here's the thing with Stanford. You guys can watch the Stanford game, and it's 19, 16, 19, whatever the score was. But when we played, and the Hart brothers will tell you, and if you get Emac back, he'll tell you, and then if you get um, the kicker back, Chad, <laughs> Chad we just knew we were going to win. It's just going out and taking care of the business. You guys mentioned the Syracuse game, and we're looking at Emac going, Emac, what are you doing? And he's like, I got this. And we're like, dude, it's three touchdowns. And he's like, listen, guys, I got this. And you know what happened? Yeah. 24 points in the second half. They didn't score anything. And that was one of the turning points of our season. Uh, you can go back to the Illinois game where they beat us up in that year. That was one of the trust things that we had. The Hart twin can actually talk about that. Logan put us in a great position, but we actually trusted our own selves. Where like, you got guys like Burns and some of those guys that are like, dude, this, these guys are going to go on for careers that are that are right there. Sixty-three. Here you go. Sixty-one. Who's that big sixty-one? We know who. Oh, that's that good. Is. Big is. We got Jamie Gray. We got. The kid from Florida, 63. What's his name? The, come on. You see it? Suds. Suds. Well, we got guys that are just coming in and just filling in, doing what they need to do, and making sure everything takes care of everything. 61, Richards, tight end. Just everyone just knew what they needed to do, and everyone just took care of business. And that was one of the things that we had good. More Sporeman. We got the uh, linebackers that came behind me, um, Carlos Brown and Marvin Burke and BJ yeah. Carlos. And you got all the D backs that just everyone filled in and did what we needed to do. 63 was Shane. I can't see that right now. Shane McPherson. That? Yeah, Shane, Shane McPherson. Shane, all of them. Everyone. That, <laughs> that was the whole thing. That was one of the things that we solidified, making sure, I'm telling you, Peach Bowl put us on notice, and we made sure that we were staying there. And that was one of the big things. Look at this. I, I think we had we had uh, uh, six quarterbacks on offense. Former former quarterbacks. Uh huh. And what Logan used to do is he would he would recruit guys with a, a high IQ, a high football IQ, and he would put us in position to make plays. And although we weren't always as talented as other teams, we were always put in a position where we could make plays, and he gave us a chance. And that's all we ever wanted. We just needed a chance. And um, Logan gave us that chance. Hey, another uh, former high school hey guys, quarterback. Uh, another former high school quarterback um, on the defensive side of the ball, Mo Fo. Yeah. Man, that dude stunk. What's wrong with that dude? He could never make a play. <laughs> 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 that dude had four four turnovers in the army game. I was like, one of my my cousin called me. He goes, Man, you know how good you guys were? I was like, No, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, You guys are pretty good. He goes, Mofo had four turnovers in one game. I was like, yeah, he had four turnovers that year. He was like, no, four turnovers in one game. Yes. I was like, what are you talking about? And he goes, go go, go look at the, the tape. I was like, he had four, he had two interceptions and two, two fumble recoveries in one game. I was like, we only had four turnovers. He's like, yeah, that's how good that dude was, man. That's, yep. That was the whole thing with our – we we always felt no matter what happened, one of our boys was going to bail us out, no matter what. Am I right? And guys, I was going to add to that. Four I was just going to add to you guys the fact that with Logan, he always gave you the reason uh, he gave you guys a chance was the fact that he trusted you guys because 
you guys were amazing. I mean, it was like an all-star team out there. That's why we won so much because yeah. give coaching uh, the coaches credit for recruiting you guys and putting you all together and coaching you up because then with the talent you guys had that we haven't had that in a, in a good while as far as the last few years that they could trust that if uh, the schemes or whatever you're doing that that the guys could like for example. There's no way in the world the last few years we could have guys one on one. They get beat all the time, especially. Right. I know it hurts you guys on defense. Yeah, yeah we yeah. we had great coaches too, uh, like Larry Coya, um, Jet, uh, Paul Jet, and um, Thurm, and you know I, I I can just name them all really. But they knew that we weren't the fastest, we weren't the tallest, and uh, you know we had some some deficiency in some areas, but. That didn't mean we couldn't win ball games. So they would they would actually derive defenses and really and I, I, I want to get Mark Mark's uh, response on this. Our defense actually was made and geared around um Darren being and staying on the field because they would always try to take us out the game or take him out the game when we went to a sub defense and um they wanted to keep him on the field, so we went to a bench and field defense, which allowed him to stay on the field. <laughs> it, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I mean, I, I look at more tape, and, and I'm playing middle linebacker. Go figure, right? right? At five, I, I mean, you were I mean, playing middle linebacker. You playing will? Well, that's yeah. That, that Carlos and uh, what that Carlos and BJ Crane to, uh, say that's a tough position. Now. We so so when we would go to, when we go to like safe we're, win the game they would run the run, linebackers out of there and Darren would be over there in strong safety and he was one of the penny guys that would say get out of there he would move out and and I'd look over and Coach Jet would be like what are you doing I'm like dude back off linebacker hey I'm like. He ain't going anywhere, dude. He knows what to do. <laughs> so that's what, one of the, that was one of the things is like we all had confidence, and that's a sad thing that Emac is not on here is because at the end of the day, I mean, Emac made some made some ballsy plays and did some stuff like that. But we were, we would yell at him, but we would also give him a big hug and be like, "Do that shit again, man. This is crazy. That's yeah. wild, man." And well, that's I, all the thing we got the dark, we got the twins, and it was like I looked to my right and looked to my left. If I didn't see a twin brother, I was like, "Time out, man." Mofo's to my left, one of the twins is to my right. If not, time out. And that was one of the cues that back in the day, the players were the only ones that could play. That could a time out. The coaches couldn't. So I mean, we used to laugh and be like, "Listen, we're in information. Where's Darren? Darren's over here." Davis all the way in the back at strong safety. We're good. Let's go. And and we we all had the ability to call a timeout. I remember one time I called a timeout, and the coach was like, "Did somebody tell you to call a timeout?" I was like, "No, we're missing a D tackle." So it was just one of those things where we had. They gave us a lot of. They did trust us a lot, and they gave us a lot of freedom. But we also knew the game. Um, I, I used to man the secondary, and with Emac and um, the corners, I would always let them know that I had their back. So Emac, he would, if he wanted to jump a route, he could do it knowing that, you know, I was going to back him up. So, guys, uh, the question I had up earlier as far as um, what Johnny Gardner thing that year after the, the Memphis game, the senior day game against the Tigers, so uh, – when we accepted the Liberty Bowl invite, do you remember what Logan said on the field as far as going back to Memphis and and, uh, and painting it purple? Well, he he told us in '95 that he told the team after we lost to Illinois that 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 wasn't ECU football. So we came up with the creed "unfinished business." And like I said, I don't know if he's a prophet or or what, but. He he when that invite came and we beat Memphis, he we already knew that he was gonna accept it. We already knew that that was the unfinished business. That would be the uh, you know, crossing the T and dotting the I to our season. 
and everybody kind of just knew. That's why when Martin Liviano say we knew we was gonna win, it didn't it didn't matter who we played. The second time we got to the Liberty Bowl, I just almost like it was spoken into existence. And uh, one, that was the only game that we had left to finish the business. So it, it was just it was poetic the way it happened. But uh, we knew that uh, he was going to accept the bid because that was part of the unfinished business uh, that we had in 94 that uh, we could redeem ourselves in uh, 95. You guys, uh, I'll talk about Coach Logan, and uh, you mentioned talking to the team at halftime in 99 after you guys graduated. Uh, what are you guys starting on Coach Houston and his staff? Obviously, Coach Shank is on, uh, is on his staff. Um, not, I guess, when, when did Shank come back? 90, no, Shank wasn't there when you guys were there. <laughs> but uh, what are you guys' uh, thoughts on the current staff, and have you got a chance to meet Coach Houston? Um, I, I got a chance to meet Co Coach Houston. Um, I, I never left, you know, ECU as far as um, – because I had a son to play there, Terrell Richardson, and he played with um, Ruffin and he played with Scotty and he also was the GA for uh, Houston. Uh, so I, I've been able to kind of follow the the, uh, the team and I think that Houston is doing a great job with the kids we have in there. Um, I thought that uh, David Blackwell had our defense because actually David Blackwell was a GA when we was playing back in the day before he went to Clemson and uh, got on that staff for a couple of years and then he came back. But uh, he established the zone type principles that we had to kind of even the uh, playing field for a lesser talent team, if that makes sense. So we we may not have the four the four star the five star players, but um, playing certain defenses to put kids in in a better situation to win the game, and uh, that's what ECU I think Houston's going to try to do that. Uh, he definitely need more talent uh, from Scotty because once Scotty got let go, uh, the transition always coming from a new coming in as a new head coach is going to be kind of difficult, but um, I think Houston's uh, doing a good job as far as getting guys in, in place. Uh, we lost our DB coach to the NFL, which was was a, a hit. That was a blow, but um, I think we're getting talent in now, and, and really it's just molding the talent that we have. You know, ECU has never been a school where we had the best talent uh, and all the all-stars, so – you got to make the best of what you have, and uh, that's what uh, making a true pirate is. But I, I, it's, it's hard to do with the way guys can, uh, you know, leave and, and this. I think after roughing, we lost the quarterback to Virginia, and then he went pro. And we, we're always losing uh, top-notch players. Uh, and it's not a coach's fault. It's just the way the, uh, the uh, students are now. Uh, kids are more of a brand than um, valuing, uh, you know, the, the uh, team and, and commodity of the, their university. So I think uh, it's a bad – it's yeah, a tough yeah. era. I, I think it's a tough era for anyone, but I, I think he's headed in the right direction. Bringing um, the O-line coach back from uh, – from um, um, the uh, – yeah, from Jay. What What's the guy, the, the head coach, though? Um it was the Notre Dame's uh, coach, a son, when he was here. Um, Lou, Lou yeah. Holtz. Lou Holtz. Son. Oh, yeah. Skip. Yeah, when Skip was here, Skip, he changed the program around, but he he was getting a lot of uh, transfers and big-time big, big time players, not from the state of North Carolina. I think uh, Houston is doing a good job in state um, to keep some guys at home. That? That, that's going to make our program that much better. Yeah, and, and I think you mentioned about the change on defense and uh, maybe playing more zone. Um, I think Coach Houston, after, you know, he, he made drastic changes to the defensive staff after year one. And uh, I think you're going to see a lot more, um, I don't want to say gimmicks, but uh, I think you're going to see a lot more um, versity, versatility on defense to try to uh, – take advantage of things with scheme versus trying to line up and just win with talent on D, at least for right now. Yeah. Right, right. 
That better keep the points down at least. Yeah. <laughs> God. So, Kyle, at this point, is it, is it still 10 0? Uh, that's a good question, Bob. We don't have a score on screen right now. Yeah, it's 10 0. Pirates 10, Stanford nothing. Uh, we got about 12 or 13 minutes to go in the uh, second quarter. Yeah, that was that was huge. Yeah, that was the. Yeah, that if was you guys want to skip it to any point in the game, we can skip it to third quarter. We can just keep letting it roll as it is. Now, Chad, on this play right here, the, the play that just went, we could have kicked a field goal. We didn't kick it. How you feel about that? You muted. You on mute? <laughs> <laughs> And see on, on that field goal, we I, I think I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I would have wanted to kick that. Yeah, I mean um that would have been a that would have been a the, the the longest field goal in Liberty Bowl history. Uh Ch Chad would have hit that. Chad would have hit well, it. Well, the, the thing was, I remember thinking that at the game, David, because uh, Chad had already made that 46-yarder to make it 10 nothing, And then um, I think that one would have been about a 42, 43-yarder. And All right, Coach, can you hear me now? Hey, there he is. So, Chad, you um, you've, already made, you've already made the 46-yarder at this point. Hello? Um, Pirates are up 10 nothing. Yeah, we can hear you, Chad. Can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm real delayed, though. I'm real delayed. So, I'm – enjoying listening to you guys it's hilarious listening <laughs> to the hearts and the liviano talking it's awesome i'm uh, but i have bad connections so it's terrible oh d what are you doing dog you went flying on that one didn't you yeah that's, that's called running. running that's called running to the football but chad we were talking about the last the last field we went for it on fourth down on the last series yeah why and and, and how did you feel about not kicking a field goal right there well, do you know why? You know why we went for it? Why? Because Coach Logan says a field goal is minus four. <laughs> oh, God. This dude. This dude. Yeah. That's but true. you was – hey, hey, Chad, you was hot, though. That's a, Well, yeah, in Memphis, that's about it. But you know what? Yeah. <laughs> The second game I ever had, that's why I figured it out. I had uh, – we had Central Florida, right? We got our ass beat on ESPN by Syracuse, Donovan McNabb, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, then we went into Central Florida next game, and I went two for three. And I told Coach, I go, hey, Coach, are we good now? And he goes, could have made all three. <laughs> yeah, he was tough. And that's when I knew. That's when I knew. I was like, I better get my shit together. <laughs> well, that was after, it, after, man. But after that fourth down that we went for, we kicked all the rest of the field goals. We kicked. I think you hit four this game, right? Four, and then one got blocked. So I could have had five because we had that stupid yeah. blocking scheme where they would just lean in on the right side and just let the guy come in and if i got it off in the right time then we should be good but all you had to do is put an arm on him right and i told right, him, right. i think it was uh i think it was richardson Lacky. scott richardson i think was the right end on that at that time or, or Chappa was it Chappa Chappaniac or what was the name the I linebacker think, i think it was scott richardson Okay. Yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, and I go, look, man, I know this is Logan's rule. You got to lean in, and that's it. And we're supposed to get it off at the right time. But can't you lean in and still put a right hand out and just pop that guy and yeah. hold him up for a half a second? Are you athletic enough to do that? He goes, yeah, man, of course. So he did that. And then that's I said that to him after that one got blocked. Yeah. And then, yeah, we, hit the, they, they and then we hit the next one, the fourth one, and then that was the one that was – that was done. Then I hit that crappy, crappy ass kickoff at the end. Almost, they almost ran it back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, didn't you make the tackle? I, I thought I saw you make the tackle. You tried anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Is that about a kick? Yeah, try, try, that, 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 that's good. payback for the kick. 
Yeah, I'm like, get the guy down. Good gracious. Chad, <laughs> Chad after the uh, after the Liberty Bowl, um, when, when you make the four kicks, now to Coach Holt, or Coach Holt, did Coach Logan want to talk about the four kicks you made, or did he just want to talk about that kickoff at the end? Oh, Coach Logan's Coach Logan, man. He's a good dude. It's so funny to listen to him now on uh, on the Raleigh radio, right? Yeah. It's unreal. It's, it's so funny. And my, I got all my buddies. I lived in Raleigh for nine years after I left ECU. And all my buddies call in and, and, they, and they call in and go, hey, my buddy's Chad Holcomb. And they mess with him and <laughs> just make him say something. It's, it's great. But he's a good dude. I love Coach Logan. I mean, he gave me he gave me my college shot. Like the first, the one thing I always remember is he. We had a team meeting one day, and it was in our you know you guys you guys know in our little conference room in the in the offices there. And he looked around at everybody and said, "You had one scholarship. <laughs> That's it. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> You had one scholarship, and I, he goes, and he knew exactly where everybody went. He goes, Chad, you went to West Georgia. You're yeah, from Smyrna. Yeah, you went yeah. to West Georgia for your tryout, and then you went to Georgia Southern, and they offered you some BS scholarship, and I'm the only one offered you a full scholarship. And then he went to the next person. He'd go to the next Atlanta. Yeah. He, he, knew, he, he had something like that yeah. on everybody. I'm like, how do you know all that yeah. shit? He knows everything. Yeah. He knew he's we right. all were on our last leg. Yeah, he's he's very smart. He's a very smart guy. Hey, you guys, uh, you talk about Logan. It's good seeing all you guys on here, though. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Oh, yeah. out in California, I guess. Where, Hearts, where you guys at? Well, they, David's in California with Libo, but they never talk. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm in Charlotte. I'm in Charlotte. Oh, nice. All right. Yeah. Hey, so Chad, email comes in. Got to keep it. Got to keep it close. And uh, and Chad, email. Well, you guys need to talk, E-Mac. man. Liviano, get with it. Libo, we're hey, Mark, good. You hear Chad? Emac, look at Emac over here. Look, I remember what we sat in the. I'll give you a. a I guess this app tells you like Emac saying hey or something. It said uh. We were sitting at our apartment in uh, Players Club, and it was me and Jarris and Joe Umflit. Remember Joe Umflit and uh, Gonzalez? And we were sitting there and we we're like watching the watching the draft. And then I leaned up real hard into the TV, and then all of a sudden, the Carolina Panthers pick Emac, and we all just went. crazy. Crazy! Oh my yeah. God, I can imagine, man. That was—I know that was awesome. Then we all just went crazy, and then Jarris got picked the day before that on the yeah, fifth yeah, round went to Miami, right? Yeah, yeah, we had, yeah. Oh, we had a good time that night. That's for sure. Anyway, all right. But yeah, what Chad? What I put up on the screen from Emac? I, know, I just, think I lost just, him or something. I don't know. Can you hear us? Oh, this is this a goal line stand. We tried to do a goal line stand, and Libiano, he, he didn't make the play on this third down. We made this play, but the next one, I think Libo, he didn't get a clean hit on him. We, we, we wanted to make them kick a field goal right here. Yeah, y'all know, y'all know that guy, the uh, Stanford kicker? He was the Playboy All-American kicker. And then they opened up the game and they scored a touchdown and missed the extra point. And I was like, we got this game. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this guy chokes. <laughs> well, we definitely didn't. We definitely went after the block on everybody. This, this, this hurt right here. Forrest Foster, Forrest Foster saying hello. You're not getting me away from this right now, by the way. I'm not going to. What's up, Forrest? Now, now, Forrest. When when we got Forrest, uh, we had Forrest and I think Emac, but we we used to have David Crumby in Emac, um, and Emac always was the field corner. Um, 
But um, and I think David, you played. You and Hank Cooper might have played a little bit of bench. Yeah, I played yeah. bench corner. When I started yeah. out, I played bench corner. So y'all, y'all rotated. But Emac was always our field corner because he could run. He, I mean, shoot, he could fly. You know, and um, that one year that Emac had like what he had six inter interceptions, something like that. Um, that that definitely put him on the map, but. I mean, Emac was always our field corner because his closing speed was ridiculous, and he could run with a lot of these kids that we played played against. Yeah, I know earlier we talked about that uh, Southern Miss game, and um, you know, we obviously won after the fake field goal when Chad mm -hmm. made made the made the twenty nine yarder or whatever it was. But Emac had a big pick six in that game. Yeah, yeah, and and see that's the, that's the difference between me and Emac. Emac could take it to the house. And, you know, the hard to him, we just going to give you the possession. Logan, go to work. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> throw the ball up, huh? Yeah, Ooh, Logan, go to work. And uh, Brian Pays, B. Pays chimes in. He says uh, that was the same year uh, Logan, faked the, uh, Logan faked the field goal at Southern Miss, like we've already discussed. But he says on our flight there, we missed the runway. And two weeks oh. later, um, Logan had to emergency land his plane on the way back from the press conference in Charlotte talking about the ECU-NC State game in 96. Yeah, I remember that that Miss Runway. That was that was dr traumatic. <laughs> and we Jason actually ran off the runway. Remember that, D? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like, what? are we going to stop? I said, uh, are we going to stop or not? And then that um, – what I remember, I, I did not know that about missing the runway then, but um, two weeks later when that press conference had happened down in Charlotte, I remember Coach Logan telling that story at the Pirate Club function as far as uh, having to land in a soybean field. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know that we was the – we had the largest crowd in the, in the history, really, of Panther Stadium. For yep. a college football game uh, back in '96 against NC State, actually. Look, Lamont Burns chiming in. He said and that was scary. Yeah, <laughs> we always the, the whole plane. Everybody was looking around like, "What's what's going on? Are we okay?" All I all I heard was breaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, Here's McPhail. But so I, Kyle, I, I don't know. You guys, you guys are, are, you know, statisticians or whatnot. And um, I, I don't know. They they called the class that we came up in, like the winning this class in ECU. I'm not sure about, you know, our four years there. Um, but uh, we, we from 93 to 96 um, and, and even in the 96 uh, year, we we probably should have went to a bowl game that year. Um, I think we finished eight and three or eight and two yeah, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and um, yeah. we probably should have went to a bowl game, not knowing what happened with that because I, I think at that point administration wanted Steve Logan out of there or whatever. And um, but I, I I like to say this era this era of football is, is the forgotten era um, because. Really, after this era of football, you go into the uh, Lou Holtz uh, era and, and and some of the other teams that that made it, you know, in the playoffs or whatnot, uh, to the uh, to the bowl games or whatnot. But this era kind of changed the the uh, narrative of ECU uh, football after the Peach Bowl. Yeah, no doubt. Like you're saying, I know what you're. Referring to um, Coach Logan, I remember men mentioning that in uh, interviews over the years after that. Uh, from 94 to 96, we won a combined 24 ball games, averaging eight wins a year. Yeah, and, and, and really that one year, we lost a game by three points, one point. We, we didn't lose no games by no more than, what, f four or five points. Uh, we, yeah. I think we lost to West Virginia by one point, 10 to nine. We went for two. And um, I just remember a lot of games, you know, when we played Kentucky, we lost to Kentucky seven to nothing. We lost to Duke. 
uh, 10, 9 or something like that when we played Duke back in 93. But uh, we, di we didn't lose no games by over two scores uh, unless they were like big time schools. And even those schools uh, knew they was in a dog fight when they played East Carolina. Yeah, like you're saying, this season um, obviously finished nine and three, ranked twenty third nationally in the in the coaches poll, and uh, that that's one of the uh, few times that we finished in the final we poll. Didn't know so. I'm sorry, <laughs> I fake, was just fake punt. punt. Uh, looking at oh, Mofo okay. running that fake punt. Yeah, that's what um, Mofo running the option like he did. I guess what it Formville Central. Yeah. But, um, no, what I was saying, let's see, um, yeah, get, getting back to this 95 season, uh, we finished the year on a six-game win streak, and we had that three-point loss at Cincinnati. It was like 13 to 10 or something, and then uh, – Seven-point we loss. To, uh, we seven to nothing against Illinois. Yeah, so we were that close to being 11 and one. Yeah, undefeated. You, yeah, exactly. We were that close to being undefeated twice, uh, even in the 96 season. We we still want we lost some some very close games uh, in that '96 season. So I mean, comparatively, we 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 could have been one of the the. And I I still like to say we're the forgotten era. Uh, not not really, you know, as far as we're the forgotten era of of, of ECU football. Really, um, Scott Harley definitely should be one of the top running backs uh, mentioned uh, in in. Uh, East Carolina history, um, along with, um, I think, um, our quarterback, Marcus Crandall, should also be known as one of the top guys uh, in, in ECU history, you know, that didn't really pan out in the NFL or whatnot. But, you know, we just had a bunch of hard, hardcore, uh, bring your pale type of uh, guys, and everybody kind of did their job, and ECU stood for family. Uh, ECU stood for family. Uh, we even had a deal, you know, foot five ball. And that was our own fraternity outside of the Greek fraternity because uh, we just was around each other so much that um, we felt like, you know, shoot, we, we had a family atmosphere. So uh, we kind of had our own little deal um, for the football program. So I, I just, uh, you know, looking at the Hall of Fame and all that kind of stuff, it's a lot of people in this era that probably should get some notoriety in, in uh, being in that ECU Hall of Fame. And I certainly agree with you. Uh, it's not even necessarily just the Hall of Fame, uh, but uh, whether it's the Hall of Fame, um, I know Cliff Godwin in the baseball program, they've done an excellent job of recognizing um, guys that have gone on to play in the minors or – the, the majors mm -hmm. and uh, recognize those guys underneath the stadium. So hopefully um, in the coming years on um, this current administration, I really think they will, uh, will find a way to recognize you guys um, with some graphics underneath Dowdy Fickle. Yeah, that, that would be much. I would love to come back and all of the guys from the 95, 90, you know, 95 team, uh, really the Liberty Bowl team to kind of come back and kind of, reunite and have like a little reunion uh, where all them guys, you know, we got guys all the way from California to shoot Florida all the way up in New York with, with little Mont Burns. He, I think he's in the New York area, played a little bit with the Jets, but I think he's still up there. Um, but uh, we got kids, we got, we got people all over the uh, country and uh, would, would definitely like for everybody to come back and, uh, you know, so everybody can see each other again. Hey, so uh, B. Page chimes in again. He says Coach Logan was mad in '95 up at Illinois for uh, for the administration putting you in a bad hotel in Champaign. Uh, do you remember anything about that? <laughs> look, look, now this is on the record. Now listen, this off the record. We 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 was in a bad hotel, and uh, I don't know who the defensive coordinator. Uh, who was the defense coordinator? It was the defensive coordinator for Illinois. But uh yeah, but his daughter was around somewhere. But uh <laughs> she she matter of fact, she she held the core. She held the core for the head the coaches um on game day, but we saw her that night. 
And it was like, you know, when we talked to her and she was bragging about, you know, my coach, my my dad's the D coordinator or something like that. And we were like, oh, yeah, we well, we coming down here to, you know, unfinished business, you know. And I'd be darned if she wasn't on the sideline when we were playing. I saw her holding the rope. I was like, I'd be dang. But, yeah, it was a cheesy hotel. It was, it was a cheesy hotel, but, you know, if it wasn't a Peabody, we felt yeah. like, Look, look, after Steve Logan, we was put in the Peabody in Memphis. It, it's, it ain't too many places better than the Peabody. <laughs> hey, back back then uh, in the mid nineties, did they they had the what's it the parade of ducks or whatever? Yeah, yeah, they did, they did, yeah, they sure did. I don't know that that Liberty Bowl year, D. I don't even remember. Us, I, I don't remember the n- night before the game. What year? We party tonight. What year? 94. The Liberty Bowl. When we play Illinois. David. David. We partied so hard. Steve Logan danced at the at the team luncheon. <laughs> look, look, look. It, it was we were so bad that la- I mean um Coach Connors were dancing. At the team banquet, Coach Connor. So we all was just dancing, having a good old time. And Simeon Rice, Kevin Hardy, and all them guys, they were just looking at us like, these guys ain't never been here before. And we No, like, man, you're right. You're right. You're right. Because we were looking over at the table. We were like, man, they don't know how to have fun. They, they, they were just us day. up. They, we had five, we had six kids in the cab. No, we had six kids in the cab. The police stops us. And, you know, they told us when we got there, make sure if, if the police stop you, show your hands and whatnot. We had six people in the cab. Police stops us. This the night before the game. I mean, we were having fun. You know, wow. but, um, and we did have a curfew. We had a curfew, but it just, I, I don't think the quote, we, we took it as serious as yeah, we did in 95. 95, when we went on the plane before we left Greenville, Coach Coach uh, said it was a it was a business trip. But hey, hey, fellas, y'all remember that we had somebody get all his clothes stolen or money stolen or something like that? Who was that? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I I can't tell you. I can't tell you who it was. I know who it was. You know what I'm talking about. I don't want to say. I don't want to say. Hey guys, uh, Lamar I, I know that I used to. I used to you know, get you know. really good room throughout my uh, my tenure at ECU because my name was the same as the uh, athletic director. So when we used to get to the hotels, you know, Dave Hart was our athletic director, and I would get my keys and I'll run up to to the desk before the guy that gets the the keys for the team. And I'll go ahead and say, you know, it's Dave Hart. I'm I'm here to get my keys because I used to get the main su- suites, and Dave wouldn't come on the trips. So I'm sitting in rooms. We had a jacuzzi one time. I think when we played yes, South Carolina, yes, we played South Carolina. We had the, we had the night set up. We had a little fruit basket. Um, I actually end up. I was I was kind of hurt before the game, so I had to. Um, I went down and to the jacuzzi. And I was all in the jacuzzi and everything. And it was like every game I would try to get to the hotel before the when we got off the bus so I can get the right room. I was like, yeah, I'm Dave Hart. Hey, Libiano, I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> and and look, my roommate, the white Henry, the white Henry, he was such a nerd. He was he was so nervous, D. I was like, dog, it's okay, man. It's, he was like, it's beer in here. It's liquor in here. I was like, that's okay. This is, it'll be okay. It's all right. But he was so worried. You know, he was a freshman, so we not had to break him in. But that, that's the dudes that actually, after we left, those are the guys that actually took the program to the next level. And, yeah. that, and that's what we're happy about. And, that, and, that's, and that's our legacy, like, we won this. We won this Liberty Bowl game, but we were just happy 
those guys, those kids behind us that were true freshmen, Snoop and all those guys, Tabari, all those guys like that. Uh, who, who, who's the guy that we call Squeaky? What's his name? Squeaky. That's the white. The white here. <laughs> you had the white. You had V two. You had my B2, two. Man. All those guys. All them guys, guys man. So they showed out. They showed out. Like that, Tavares that, Taylor. We were happy with you know, yeah. Like those guys were the happy guys, man. And they, those guys carried our program, and that's what I think that we're most proud about. Yeah, that was one of the the, the best things about our team. We were such a family, but we did it the right way. So the guys that were behind us, we we kind of left them a legacy where we showed them how to practice. We showed them how to play and how to prepare for football games. And they took that after. So when we went in the locker room against Miami, when we played NC, um, when we played um, University of Miami at NC State, we had that pedigree that we could go into that locker room and they would listen to us because those are guys that played with us um, in the year prior. And um, it was just a good thing to see that um, all that paid off and they carried the, the torch. What's the score in this game right now, Bubba? It looks like it's 16-7. to 16-7, seven. Seven, Kyle? 13-7. 13-7, all right. Because I, I knew at halftime it was – I knew at halftime it's 16-7 to seven and then um, – Something goofy happened. We got a, a pump yeah, block or something yes. like that. Yeah, got a pump block to, to make it 16-13, and then Chad made his fourth field goal to go up 19-13. Hey Chad, did you ever punt the ball? <laughs> Chad, did, you, did you ever punt the ball? I think he's mute. I think he's muted. Or no, he's not muted. Chad, you ever punt the ball? He can't hit me. Look, look, here it goes. EJ, look, hey. EJ Gumpro. No, it was Matt, it was Matt Semenza. No. Semenza. Uh, Semenza. <laughs> Matt was a punter, right? No, Matt he was wasn't what? a punter. He was Not Matt. I Matt mean, linebacker. It yeah. was Matt. It was another Matt. Matt Levine. Levine. Matt Levine. Levine. Yeah. yeah. Levine. Come on, D. Now I know I ain't. Look, y'all call me busy, but I remember some stuff now. <laughs> yeah, Matt, yeah, Matt Levine. I remember the previous year uh, when we put that whipping on South Carolina. He he threw a touchdown on the the fake punt. Yep, yep, and then I think it was a uh, Bays or something. Andrew Bays after him. Yeah, Bays was excellent. You guys are getting, <clears throat> you yeah. guys are getting ninety six and ninety seven years uh, confused. Hey man, yeah, they were they were there when they were there in ninety six. Yeah, we had all those guys. Lamont yeah, Chapel. Who who else was those receivers that were? Just lined up behind him. Mitch Galloway was our dude. Mitch the Brew, was like just Mitch Linwood, Linwood Brew. Yeah, yeah. Troy, was Troy Linwood, Smith right All those dudes were like yeah, Troy, Troy Smith was, was there in the too. ball, man. They'll sneak. They'll sneak seven, eight yards every time you give them the ball, man. They just, they just, those are guys that just took care of business, man. And then a couple years later, they just blossomed and and just won, man. It's just, it's a good thing, man. We used to beat on them. I tell you, we, we used to beat them up in practice. That whole crew used to call themselves the assassin. Hey, how, how do you guys, I don't know if you guys can see the screen there. How, how do you think that up? <laughs> all those, all those, what about all those young linebackers, Brian Johnson, um, all those guys, Carlos and Mo and um, 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 BJ. Hell, BJ and then uh, Marvin Burke were. They were all kind of our age, but the guys after that were funny, man. They were, they just, they listened. They were good Go dudes. They just put their heads right. down and won. And that's what yeah. they did every year, man. So, who's this? This is uh, Richard, Son Richardson and all those guys, tight ends. and Yeah. 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 We just had a good time, man. And, and that's the funny thing is, Bubba, we used to go out and party. Coach Logan would be like, oh, you guys can't party. It'd be like we call the Tart Twins and we call Mofo, EJ, and all these other guys. And be like, where are you guys going? We're going over here to drink. We'll see you there. 
It was we never party for an hour, hour and a half. Never going our own way. <laughs> we were conditioned that we were conditioned where we could do both. We could party, yeah. but we we dag show gonna be able to yeah. to play in in the game and be at at a high level. But um, that was something we kind of got as freshmen. We, we we started. We always redshirted actually, but except you and Mofo. So we we learned how to. Um, Kind of hold our liquor. No, but here's the difference. Here's the difference, Dave. Dave, Dave, here's the difference. Here's the difference. We partied on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. No, not Friday. Thursday. No, no, no. Yeah. Wednesday. No, Friday. Thursday, not Friday. Saturday. Thir- no, Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? No, no Friday. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Wednesday, we- Wednesday was the last. Friday. Yeah, but Chad Holcomb. Chad Holcomb party every night. <laughs> hey, every night was a good night. Hey, look, Chad unmuted himself. He's got, he's got to defend himself now. Oh, he know. Where, where did you stay, Chad? Kiss them place. Where, where did you stay? Nobody knows where Chad stays. Chad, where did you stay? You didn't. You wasn't in the dorm long. <laughs> what is he doing? <sighs> ah. But yeah. But no, Darren. Uh, a couple minutes ago, you brought up as far as uh, you were talking about punters and Matt Levine and some different ones we've had in that era. Um, I saw a stat in this game just talking about Coach Logan's tendency to fake punts, and it said, I want to say it was from his first year as head coach in 92 up to this point, he had faked something like, I don't know, 22 punts, and 18 of those 22 were successful. Right, and 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 people knew that, and he knew people knew that, so he would, he would always do this stuff early in the year, so we wouldn't get – our punts rushed the rest of the year. So he he knew that if he faked some stuff early, that teams would, would have to be scared, you know, worried about that. So, I mean, he was a genius. I, I, I just – I look at some of the things that our defensive staff did along with our um, offensive staff uh, back in the day. Uh, most of those guys, uh, they went on to be head coaches. Uh, at some point, all of our offensive coaches uh, ended up uh, being Doug Martin, uh, head coach at I think Mexico. Yeah, uh, you had yeah. Um, you, you had the running back coach. Um, he's like the head of of NCAA. Yeah, um, he, Todd Berry. Todd Berry. He was at Army. I think the. I mean, he was somewhere. I think it was at Army. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But we had we had a whole lot of coaches that really went off to be head coaches. I think uh, Jim Fleming is at Rhode Island. Um, shoot, uh, you you had James Webster. He was at Tennessee State, and all these guys went on to be head coaches. Larry Coyier, who uh, really brought the uh, the For mentality, real. he he brought that mentality to uh, East Carolina. And, and here's the thing: we played one defense. We played one defense and different um, deal. We would play three kick and cover three the whole year. And uh, he actually uh, changed the defensive mindset at uh, East Carolina for us. And then Paul Jett came in and uh, we started off with um, Thurman. But those guys came in and uh, even with Chuck Bagano, um, we had some real good coaches. Chuck ended up, you know, being a head coach in the NFL. But uh, we just had a lot of good coaches, great coaches that was inspiring to be head coaches that came through uh, that came through, you know, East Carolina in our era. And uh, we we benefited definitely off the uh, great minds that uh, ECU had on coaching staffs. And Darren, uh, kind of piggybacking off what you're saying, a guy that came in uh, on the offensive side of the ball your senior year. Um, so I know Scott Harley was chiming in earlier. So Scott knows a lot about this guy, uh, Jerry McManus. Uh, he's down in Venice, Florida now, and he and Larry Shannon are actually on the same high school staff. 
Are you kidding me? McManus was with, see, I, yeah, McManus was with ECU program for a minute. And uh, Larry and um, our running back, um, it's another guy that was there before Larry who, who played with us. He was a fullback. But uh, it was him and Larry on the same high school staff. Uh, he's doing good down in, in Florida. But um, I know you're talking about. Martin, I mean, I, I know that uh, Scott Harley know who I'm talking about. But um, they they did a real good job in Florida. Uh, I actually tried to have one of my high school teams play, uh, you know, Florida school, you know. And uh, we were trying to get that deal uh, down going. But I'm pretty sure that they probably would have killed us. But uh, it would have been a good game for them to come up to Charlotte. But we that never came to. But uh, yeah, I, I followed Larry Shannon. He's doing a great job in Florida, um, uh, and um, I forget the other guy's name. He was a fullback. This is a little, little known history, man. I went, I went to the University of Miami after we beat them with um, with Bagano, and I was the GA. And guess who was my my first? Uh, Free safety, Ed Reed. Yeah. So I, I you know, I, I like the fact that he, you know, he's a Hall of Famer and all. But I, I was one of his first coaches in um, at the University of Miami. Yeah, not a bad guy to take credit for. Yeah, you know, you know. I, I remember him playing that that uh, game in Raleigh in '99. He was awesome. But. Um, Lamont Burns chiming in. He said, Theo Lemon. <laughs> hey, Theo Lemon. I, I'm not sure where Theo Lemon went, but I'll tell you a story. Lamont Burns was playing defensive end. And um, uh, and Thurman, Coach Thurman, I mean, uh, Thur Leo was his position coach. And um, Larry Coyer used to have a pipe, and he would smoke everywhere. It could be a no smoking sign, and he would smoke mm -hmm. anyway. So he was just known as the the the, the pie piper because he's gonna come and leave a a smoking uh scent wherever he came. So he went up to um, Lamont did something in practice wrong, and he he just asked Lamont Lamont why did you do that? He was yelling, and he was like Theo did it, and he just ripped Theo Lemon. It was so hell oh, man, it was so funny man. <laughs> and, um, but Lamont, Lamont was one of my, my one of my best friends uh, coming out of um, coming out of Page High School. We actually, I I, I would go home with him in the uh, summertime and things like that. And uh, you know, we we became real good friends. Um, and uh, L L Lamont Burns, he he was definitely a character. He was the he was the Rodney Dangerfield of our team. He he so he told some good jokes. No, yeah. You you talking about him being from Page, and uh, I know here within the last several years, uh, I saw a picture of you guys on Facebook. Um, uh, it was the two of y'all and Lamont uh, Burns, and let's see who else, Marcus Crandall, and maybe one or two others at mm -hmm. the Coaches Clinic in Greensboro that they have in, uh, I think, January, February, whenever it is. Yeah, we we, we all stay in touch. Um, and like I said, Lamont was like one of my, you know, best friends and then he he actually went he went over Greeks uh Sigma and um actually the the first time that I ever took a sip of alcohol Lamont Burns was there with me but and I we didn't drink you know me and my brother we didn't we didn't do nothing we were like choir boys and and a lot of people didn't know that until later on you know Greenville kind of sucked you in and um you know going down <laughs> the, the elbow you know, the drinks were so cheap, you know, you know, you have like five dollars, you in there, you know. But uh, we we had some good times. But, uh, yeah, we, we all stayed in touch. Uh, we followed uh, Marcus Crandall through his uh, Canadian football uh, league deal. And uh, he had a good career up there with uh, Saskatchewan and a couple of schools. I mean, teams up that way. But won a, a couple of World Bowl championships. <laughs> Yeah, Marcus had a tremendous career in Canada, and he's doing yeah. an excellent job now on uh, Pirate Radio. Yeah, we we actually went down, and uh, me and uh, the linebacker. 
What is the linebacker name uh, after Liviano? Jeff Crane. Crane. Car. Car. Remember, we saw Car at the radio station. We all went over there. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For, for the homecoming. So it's good seeing Jeff. Jeff actually, I, I, I'm kind of like the guy, you know, I follow everybody. So Jeff, uh, he was in uh, NASCAR uh, as a pit pit crew guy. And uh, he, he makes a, uh, he made a good living out of it. I don't think he's doing it anymore, but. Yeah, he just, um, he gave it up here in the last couple years or so. He's a financial advisor over in the Troutman area right off of I-77 now. Okay. And, and uh, Danny, Danny's still in NASCAR. He actually won the race before the COVID nineteen. Uh, Danny, what's his name? Danny Moore, Daniel. The, um, <laughs> I know. I, don't um, know his name. I know we had Big Ed Watkins. Uh, Big Ed, Danny. Big Ed, Who's Danny. Yeah, Ed, Ed. That's him, Ed. Yeah, yeah but, Big Ed. Big Ed. Yeah. Danny Moore. Danny Moore is. Um, he's in this general area as well. He's probably about a. I don't know, hour north of Charlotte, something like that. Okay, okay, yeah. Ed, Ed, Ed is going to win. Ed just win. They just won a race, uh, the last one before the before we went into quarantine or something like that. But uh, Ed's in NASCAR also. All good yeah, dudes, we, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All great dudes. Right. And yeah. they, and they, they family, man. Dave said the Daytona 500. Yeah, I think didn't didn't Ed win that team? Yeah, he was he was uh, Denny Hamlin's gas man. Okay, yeah, yeah. And and, uh, and, and and Libo, I'm talking about they actually work out like football players. They got a whole setup. Them pit crew guys. I mean, shoot, you go over there, they got stuff, man. They rolling, they running forties. They doing a the whole nine, man. <laughs> yeah, that's been a big thing over the last 10 to 20 years is having former college football players and athletes. Mm -hmm. They they talking about the last time I saw them, I saw them like 10 years ago out in Fontana, and they were like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, good. And they're like, well, what do you think? I'm like, mm, that seems like a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God, hey, he's on. good. Though. It's a lot of energy. It's <laughs> a lot of energy. Them. We were, we were trying to – we got off to a slow start because of technical difficulties. We were going to try to end this thing by nine. So I'm going to skip it here before unless you guys have some objections. Okay. It's Tyrone quiet, crying like a little baby like normal. Look at him. <laughs> you're skipping – He's realizing he's skipping. losing right now. He's losing right now. So – he but like, Darren, what did we get ourselves into? But Darren and David are talking about the guy now, that actually, when when we were there, this is this is what we were happy about. The guys that came behind us, all those guys, Jeff Carr and all those guys, they they produced. Not only did they produce, they were winners, and that's mm -hmm. one of the things that we were happy about, man. Like, yeah, we won the Liberty Bowl and we set up the guys. These guys went down deep Miami and a few other teams. But those other guys, they just kept winning, man. And that was that. Like when we come back, we we love seeing those guys. They those guys were, you know, true freshmen, sophomores, and stuff like that. But they they still won, man. And that and that was the great thing that, that we we're most proud about is, is yeah. we won. We set up where we won, and then those guys kept the tradition going. Yeah. Who was in that? Kevin Monroe. Yeah, hey, we got Kevin uh, Monroe uh, David Gerard. I'm sorry, I said again about played. Remember, right? David Gerard came to uh, one of uh, Logan football camps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got a feedback issue here. Yeah, That's I got that. you. Uh, no, I heard you, David, as far as David Gerard coming to camp. And um, I was going into my freshman year of high school in that summer of 96 and I came to camp and um, and Gerard was going to his senior year at Southern Durham. So I just remember, uh, I remember yeah, uh, during that camp, Logan was all over David and, and I, I didn't, I didn't know his last name at that yeah. point. I just remember calling and telling my dad and I was like, Hey, there's some kid named David from Durham. I said, coach Logan's. Uh, yeah. Well, 
that that trip when we was at that camp, we was looking at David when he first came out. And we were like, man, that's a defensive tackle. I mean, uh, that's an offensive tackle. And uh, Logan was like, no, he plays quarterback. And we was looking because you know some of the players with with Logan's um, with some of his um, summer camps, we would work some of the the camps. So we probably was there when you guys were going through the, the camp. Y'all were. We used to hang I remember out. Morris we, being there. Yeah, we used to like to hang around just to kind of, you know, help out. And uh, we were looking at Garrod, and we was like, man, there ain't no way this guy going to be a quarterback because he, he was all a, a, a two, 210 in high school. And we knew that when he got to ECU, he was going to be bigger. Yeah, I, I Gerard, like, like, you, like you're saying, David was about uh, 265, 270, and then um, the story was um, – actually, I think David told us this story when he was on the podcast uh, back in the fall. Uh, he was just talking about how uh, Coach Logan made him run every day about noon, and uh, he dropped from 270 down to 235. Darren, did you just see yourself yeah. beat yeah. the head after that play? No, nah, but I missed the tackle in the backfield, and I like to get them tackle for losses. Okay. And, and I, I'm just mad that I didn't get a good hit on them. But we know their tailback was pretty fast. But I, I like the same year that we got David Garrod, uh, we had Michael Vick on on our campus also. And Michael Vick, we, we had them also, you know, when, when we used to recruit, we recruited all these guys, whether it was Suggs, all the way down to Tabaris Taylor, who's winning. He, I guess he's teacher of the year in New Bern, North Carolina, whatnot. He's doing real good as a principal now. Principal but, of the year. Yeah, principal of the year. But we, we had Michael Vick on East Carolina's campus. We had him ready to sign, seal, deliver. But uh, I think uh, when he left East Carolina, going back to Virginia, Somebody told him that they, uh, Steve Logan was going to try to make him a wide receiver because we did get David Garrod. So, um, and that got out. So he ended up, you know, going to uh, Virginia Tech. But he had an awesome time on his recruiting visit. Um, I can attest you to that. Uh, we made sure that. Yeah, we made sure yeah. that Michael Vick had a great time. And uh, when Steve so Logan right. asked us on Sunday, do we do we have him? And we were like, he should be coming to East Carolina. But I guess a phone call kind of beat us. And um, somebody said that we were going to put him at wide receiver because of David Garrod. Guys, in the 16th, 13th grade, we had Really? Yeah, definitely. Well, we we knew we knew that the defense had to stop them in order to win the game, and um, they wasn't doing anything that we didn't know that they were going to do. Like like Emac said, they ran the same thing that we saw on film, and uh, so that they, they wasn't a very complicated offense. Uh, they had a couple of guys that could 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 kind of run the ball and, you know, things like that. But uh, we knew that uh, they couldn't run on us. So we kind of knew that we – if it was on the defense, we were going to win the game. So where are we at now here at the end of the game? We're in the fourth quarter at 16-13. Uh, you guys are up by three. Uh, about 12 minutes to go to four. No, nah, we – Hey, and kind of like you guys were saying, as far as the defensive performance in this game, uh, I kind of refreshed myself uh, with some of the numbers earlier. Uh, we only we only allowed 211 yards this day, and um, and just 11 first downs for Stanford. Like I said, they they didn't have a complicated offense. It was pretty much get behind Selena and uh, run the tailback that had a little bit of speed. Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't know who. Uh, what was the the quarterback name? Holcomb. What what, what was his name? Uh, Gov- Butterfield. Butterfield. I, I didn't know much about Butterfield. Butterfield. Yeah, we call him Buttercup on the field, but we didn't know a lot. You know, he wasn't known like some of the quarterbacks in the past that we had had faced. So 
we we didn't uh, think that they could they could throw the ball on us. So that was the deal. If we had any kind of lead, we felt like we could close it out. Hey guys, Chad Holcomb says right. Mike Vick would have signed with East Carolina if he would have been his host. Man, come come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now listen, here's the thing though. All the guys, like Mark Libiano said, all the guys that did sign with with East Carolina pretty much came through the 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 van, the heart, the heart, mofo. We we call it sweet 214. It was it was me, Mitch Galloway. We had um What's the other receiver? Allen, Allen Williams. Allen Williams, the Hart twins, and, and, and Marcus Crandall, and Sean Richardson. We pretty much was the host for all the kids that came behind us. And uh, we did a good job of getting kids to sign with East Carolina because it wasn't hard to sell East Carolina. You take them downtown. And if anybody came on Halloween, it was over. So we saw some crazy stuff on Halloween. <laughs> Hey, one of the guys I wanted to ask so you here about, you go. What? I think Chad's obviously had some issues with his uh, audio, but he says, he said, my man is BJ Crane. Uh, I, I just remember BJ uh, for, for uh, w- more recent Pirates, uh, if you think back to about six, seven years ago, uh, not, even that, not even that long, Deke Bigger. Um, I know he obviously played with Terrell. Um, yeah, BJ Crane was kind of the Zeke bigger of that era from the standpoint that he loved to talk to the media. Yeah, we call him the lawyer because he always had something to say, and he always kind of led off uh, with the old sands, and 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 he definitely had the the gift of gab. So uh, yeah, he was the Zeke bigger of uh, of our era for sure. Hey, can y'all hear me? So here, here yeah, we got, we got some chat. Go ahead. All right, I'm finally in. All right, y'all go ahead. I just want to make sure I'm in. Y'all go ahead. Who's our punter back then? Did, was this a turnover? No. Uh, What's that? Where we had it would have been good if we could have ran the ball a little bit. I just more. saw the interception earlier. Thirty-two, right there. Who is that? Chef Chapaniac. Yeah, Chef. That was Chef. Chef. <laughs> Chef. Chef was the other wing. Chef. Chef was yeah. the other wing on your field goal. He's the one that got my field goal block. That one. No, all these guys, EJ, <laughs> Brian Williams, everyone, everyone all played in this game, man. And this is that's the point. Like, this is what, this is what we were doing is just winning, and guys were all playing special teams and making sure everything was taken care of. You got yeah. Jason Nichols, uh, Lin Linville, what, Linwood the Brew. Last name. Linwood the Brew. Yeah. yeah. Man, he was like a little silent dude, never said anything, just caught passes. Okay. First yeah. Sounds. That's all he did. He's like, yeah. hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> well, so I call is, him Bill Head. Yeah. So this is this is where we're at. Um, Why was he not? Is this the last possession? There's Emac right there doing his thing. This is where uh, last we possession. Uh, we in a, yeah, this is where we're we about to lose right here. There we go, guys. No, this is not the last possession. It's early in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I think it looked like what? Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, 10 minutes, Kyle. 10.54. 10.54 to go. A lot of football left, guys. They just couldn't run the ball. Oh, oh, who's that? Marvin Burke. What, what is Marvin? Speaking of Marvin. Marvin who's 51? That's, that's, that's Libiano. There's Marvin. Me. Liviano's 80. Liviano got him kind of angry. They played, <laughs> they played an ISO game, you know, bring the fullback back, bring, get, hand the ball off to the tailback and see if he gets three, four yards and, and run right. the ball. See, they still trying to run the ball. Come on, now you're not going to get to the sideline. Here you go. See, most people don't know this, but Mark Liviano was all state volleyball <laughs> player in high school. Wow. Wow. Aaron Black. Wow. Liviano. 
You play Mayo. volleyball? Mayo. He's a gangster. He plays every sport possible. <laughs> oh my God. Libo this, plays this, volleyball. We didn't know that. That's some news there. Listen, David, David, but listen. But David, David, he actually could jump. <laughs> yeah, but I ain't never seen him on the hill. Walter. Walter I ain't never, Scott, you know, here's Walter. Walter killing it. We had a big on the hill, D. He never played he volleyball with the lady. <laughs> Make stuff happen. Look at that. Hey, Libiano, you're trying to talk old pass that you played volleyball. You good volleyball player. This guy's like this. Walter Scott just grew in the positions. He's not even going to acknowledge it. He just Darden, look, there's the quarterback going away. Hey, yeah. hey, but Mark, but Mark. <laughs> Mark is the only guy I always every year that I play. I, I try to, I try to, I try to, ta I try to beat Mark Libiano in tackle, and I and I never, I never was able to beat Mark in tackle. He led the, I, I want to say you led the team in tackles for three years straight. Who's that? You. Two. Okay, you know, <laughs> no, you led you led the team in tackles for three years straight. Here you go, look. Turn the ball. Ooh, he can't hear me. Right. He can't hear you. Dizzy, yeah, Dizzy got the truck. <laughs> hey, the clock's still running. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's the whole thing. What what down is it? Third down and four. Here we go. Yeah. Hey, hey, Hearts. Remember, we got the ring, the watch, the and then y'all wanted to get uh, the chain. After that, we're gonna go to another one, and then we got snub. It's third down. Yeah, they 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 really they they did us in. Who's eight? Uh, Suggs. That's uh, Suggs. Yeah, yeah he, he should have brought it to him. <laughs> he he should have brought it to him. Who are? All I can see is five hey, people on here. Who all is on this thing? Like a million? I'm sorry, Kyle. You say you're skipping ahead to the final production. Yeah, I'm five minutes. Is your nose okay? Is your nose okay? Is your nose okay? Look at this guy. But Darren, kind of uh, getting back to what you were saying very, very early on as far as uh, just that mentality of, uh, of being able to win on the last play of the game. Um, that was something uh, I know we as fans, we kind of joke around about, kind of like you were saying, uh, yeah, if you, if you have to win a game on the last play of the game, by all means, but uh, if you can blow them out, blow them out. Yeah, we, 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 didn't, we didn't blow out a lot of people because I, I just really think that, that, that Logan, Steve Logan, he had a way of thinking, and it, it was – it was we always had good running backs we had good run blocking linemen so it was all almost like you're preserving cuz i've been in coaching for, for 20 years now and it's almost like you're you're preserving your players for later in the season if you run the ball that yep. makes sense and and we we just really kind of was a, a blue collar you know bring your pail to the game and uh, we just wore teams down and we played a lot of people. Like Mark said, we had players for special teams, for, I mean, we played a lot of kids. And uh, that also helped preserve us for later on in the season. So if you're looking at this game, we don't have a lot of injuries at East Carolina. We, we didn't have a lot of our big time players ever get injured because we would phase out of playing special teams and we would phase back from playing. Uh, you know, doing different things, and um, 
it really because think about it. If you're trying to score a lot of points, um, that's taxing on the defense also. Without the other team scoring a lot of points, right? So we didn't have to play as many snaps because we had the first down type mentality on offense. And a lot of people don't know the the you know the, they don't know the the scheme that was put into place because nowadays when Skip Host was there, for instance, ECU would always try to score a lot of points. But they don't understand if you don't have a defense and the depth in defense, then you're still going to be in a tough game. So the game started – the game exactly. now with East Carolina is, is 45 to 38. You know, the scores are so high. Uh, it's always 100 points on the scoreboard every week. Yeah. I, like you were saying, you're thinking about uh, Coach Ruff. Because uh, actually uh, under Skip um, – we we had some pretty good defenses and uh, particularly yeah. particularly uh, two thousand eight yeah. and two thousand nine. Right, like, I, and, I don't and, and score hundred or we score twenty. I just win. Like, right, oh. and and that was the key. But we always had we had the running back that that the real fast running back back when Skip was here, um, the one that went to the league, uh, the ran the four the four two or something like that. Right. CJ. Yeah, we had all them. So we Johnson. always put up points. We always put up points, but you got to have an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator working together awesome. to, manage, to manage the uh, the overall team. And I think Steve Logan did a great job of, of complementing his defensive coordinator uh, so that we could kind of balance the whole game. A lot of teams now, you're going to have a good offense, and the defense is holding on. Or you're going to have a good defense and the offense is trying to get through a game. But I think uh, Steve Logan brought that balance. That, yeah, that like was probably, that Sorry, was go ahead, one Mark. Of his best coaching attributes that you can actually have is he balanced it out. He knew when, when to score, when to run the clock. And that was – I remember, man, when I was a freshman, you guys – you guys red shirted, but I was I played or whatever. <clears throat> we didn't have a punter, we didn't have a kicker, we had nobody. Right. <laughs> and my dad looked at him, he goes, Whatever. He goes, I don't know. I know <laughs> one thing. You you better figure that kicking game out. And Coach Logan was like, I am never gonna give a scholarship to a kicker. Next year, man, we had everyone, we had three kickers on scholarship because he right. realized that yeah, at yeah. the end of the day, kicking possession, running the clock, making sure you knew what you were doing is it was a balance. It's three teams, four teams, yeah. um, offense, defense, special teams. And the fourth one, and a lot of people never tell you this, the fourth one is coaching. There's four different teams. And if, right. you, if, you, if you forget about that, you're going to lose the game. We had three or four of them, and we, we made it shine. And, and that was one of the things when I went from my freshman year to my sophomore year, we went two and nine. We had some good people, but we also started, we got some kickers. We had some punters. We had, we had the steeds and we just lost the quarterback that one year. Right. But we would have been good that year, that year. You guys, you guys understood that, but that's, that's what happened yeah. when I was a senior, all that really, stuff really came good. together. All the kicking game, all the offense, run the ball, run the clock down, play defense. We play defense. They sometimes right. we'd be on we'd be on the field 10, 12, 14 plays, but they would only get three points. We'd only let them score three points. And that right. was a big thing back then. Well, well Kyle, I think he, he was a, a our defense was a dream gangster because it wasn't it wasn't like we we ran spread offense all the time like they do now. Right. Logan would save that for the four the fourth quarter yep. late yep. in the game and he would change the offense up and we'll go right down the field and score. Yep. Now so the team started off first quarter with spread and they had nothing to go to when they need it in the fourth yep. quarter. They all gassed out. Look, there's Mitch Galloway grabbing the ball, doing what he does. Mitch, Larry so Shannon good. was a freshman. 
Richardson was the tight end. We had two great tight ends. Running back. Look at Why is Miss Galloway has there such big Mitch shoulder pads on? Hey, hey, hey. hey. I, and here, here, here's, here's what I want to – Here's what I want to say to the panel. Name the the best running back since 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 uh, Sky Harley. Name the best running back that East Carolina's had under skill. I mean under uh, Scotty and Houston. Name the running back. And if we can't name the running back as a superstar, then we then have a problem. We we you're gonna have a problem with time of possession. Correct. Well, and that and that's and that's what actually right. Logan got actually it. figured right. out. Right. Got it. Yeah. Uh, get it done with, with, but we'll, we'll see if that happens. What? What's Jared what's the running back now? Number seven. Penix. Penix. There you go. There you go. Oh, I love Penix. First down. First down. Jarris, run the ball. Yeah. But because what that does, running the ball, it runs the clock. So now the teams like the teams like uh, Florida, Atlanta, and all they can't they can't score a lot of points because That's there's DJ no time too. on the clock. There he goes. Run but the it's, it's it's definitely strategy. It's definitely strategy involved. Well, that's it. And then I think that was Logan's one of his best things that he actually knew how to actually manage the clock. He learned that quick. In the beginning, he didn't understand it. And then he got the punters, he got the kickers, he got everyone. And he started learning how to manage that yeah. clock, man. Yeah. That's what we went from, uh, what was it, 91, 92, after the um, Peach Bowl to, to, to so, taking these yeah. guys like Crandall. I mean, Remember Marcus? Marcus, and there was a few quarterbacks behind him. Remember when Marcus got hurt? Uh, what, yeah. What was that dude? Uh, Scott Hester, Hester, and all he, the Chris they, Hester. They knew how, Perez, the ball, Madison. Run the ball. Perez. Be good. Take care of it. Here, here's Chad. Danny. Danny was the best. Well, you know what? I, I think I think in that two and nine year, I think in the field goal putting it away right here. That's where low. But Star, and that's that he has to manage. That's the field goal. Put it away right there. Boom. There's Chad hitting one. Another one. Did right? you hit it? Yeah. <laughs> Bye, man. Chad Holcomb, listen, listen, guy. Chad Holcomb. Chad Holcomb, one of the best finishers. Chad Holcomb is one of the best finishers in ECU right history. Now. Hey guys, you know how many field goals we we missed in bowl games against Arkansas? Against I mean, it was every year. We would miss so many field goals in the bowl game at East Carolina, and that's what kept us from beating the SEC school every year. That was it. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, that's what you, what you guys have been talking about the whole time. We're going to fight. We're going to fight. And we're going to claw to the end. How we're going to get in there. Yeah. We're going to fight. We're going we're gonna to win by one point. How many times did Chad hit field goals in uh, 90? What was this? This is 95, 96. How many times you guys win that after, after I was done? It, I don't know. I was, I was basically done, too. Yeah, I was only one year behind you. That was it. We went the next year. We went nine to three, and we didn't even go to a bowl game. So this is the fourth quarter. Hey now, Chad. No, no, Chad. How many? How many game winners did you win? It you hit in '96. I don't. I don't think. I don't think there was any game winners. I think it was just like regular field goals. I gotta be honest. I, yeah, I think he's, he's good to go. Oh yeah, that's, that's right. Because Scott but, Harley scored touchdown, but the, the Scott Harley was running 400 <laughs> yards a game and killing it. But I will tell you this: my last game ever, I knew we weren't going to a bowl game because we were still independent, and we played NC State at the Panthers. This is the end. Of, this is the end of the game, right? Yeah. There is it. There. Yeah. Look at Mofo right there, man. I'm trying to hold him down. I'm trying to lay him. 
two timeouts. This is when they're trying to drive. Going back. Putting some hey, Dad, yeah, as far as that 96 season, I remember in that game when we beat Miami in the Orange Bowl. Middle of the field. Uh, you made a 52-yarder that night. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, man, Chad, Chad, Chad grew into what he needed nice. to do. And, you know, we had some good uh, kickers out there. So here, here's they're trying to drive, they're trying to drive and get to where they need to get to. I tried. To, I threw a blow on it that to was his head right there. Hit. I threw a blow to his head all. right there. This, this could have been fifteen, guys. Yeah, it should have been fifteen, 15 15 yards. Yard. <laughs> I, I actually tried to punch him in his head. What do y'all? What do y'all? Hardest tackled on the last play, right? He threw it in the dirt. Yeah. Got him? Yeah. But I think I did. But I was, yeah, I, I tripped him up. <laughs> it wasn't like, but, but, but see, they had it. Did the well, trick. We we won this game by three, six. Yeah, six. I, think, I think they tried to go for it on third. Or okay, we we won this game by six. So we knew that they couldn't score. Like yeah. we knew that, you know, the Bimba don't break, but we knew they weren't going to score. He was hurt right there. Who 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 dizzy? Who dizzy? This way I knocked him out. Who dizzy? <laughs> this guy. When I hit him, I knew he was out. D. I, at first, I thought he was acting, but then I was like, "Nah, man, y'all need to keep running the clock." Hey, where, where did Chad go, dude? Why is he on lockdown? Look, look. He's he's in he's in a boating man. He he's he's on the deck or something. Oh my god, you did hit him, man. Hey, whoa, whoa, hey whoa, you're whoa. out of the game, D. You're out of the game. Look, D, look, whoa, hey, whoa. No you get penalized. You get penalized for Darren, that today. Darren's playing two hand touch. Darren's playing two hand touch, dude. No, hey, hey, Libiano. I got I got I got oh, sorry. Uh, I can hear y'all. My mic was on mute for accident. My bad. But look, but look, Libiano, I got I got uh, a tackle on that play. I'm trying to I'm trying to catch I'm trying to catch you in tackles. I never was able to, to have more tackle than Libiano. He's the only guy at East Carolina that had more tackle than me because he always got there first. <laughs> Hey, hey, Liliano, you was up for the Bunkers Award, right? So good. Yep. He was. Is this is this fourth down or what? This is fourth down. They go this is third. third ball. There he Where is. Where are you the ball? Get the ball. I see Liliano. Yeah. That's it, right? That's the game. That's one more play. It's one more. One more play. The last play yeah. is. Uh, uh, is a heart a heart tackle? He throws it in the dirt. Yeah, I think I think they run into the slant route and they drop it. It's fourth down. It's one more throw play right here. And we'll see what happens here. But the most important thing yeah, is they have no timeouts, and if they catch the ball in the middle of the field, field. caught this ball though. It's still, it, it's still time would have ran out. Time would have ran out because it was only 16 seconds. There's the map. Right? Yeah, there's the map. <laughs> the ball hit the ground, guys. There it is. The ball hit the ground. It's fun. Good. I forget yeah. what happened in those last two plays. I... And, and guys, yeah. they'll talk about the the uh, they'll talk about all the bowl ground. game. They'll talk about a lot of the bowl games in ECU history, but nobody talks about the Stanford Liberty Bowl. <laughs> Who's that? Why not? That's a little low. Uh, yeah, that nobody talks about the uh, Stanford Liberty Bowl. But hey, hey, it was good to see all the guys. I mean, Coach Logan pumped up. I mean, I I mean right, right there with Marvin Burke. Uh, yeah, there's my Coach, Marvin. Coach Marvin. Logan grabbed Marvin Burke. Marvin Burke's eyes look like Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah. <laughs> So, Bubba, this is the time where there's only 10 bowl games. And there's 120 there's 120 teams, and there's only 10 bowl games. And that was the proud thing that we did was – Yeah, there we got were more than that. There, there, there was, it, was about, it was about 20. 
Should have had one my senior year, too. Oh, go. Got so, snuck. 20. R- roughly, give or take. I mean, but your point holds true because, like you're saying now, it's so watered down. It's great. 130 teams when we got about 40 plus bowl games. Yeah, this is this is when we had 10. Yeah, 20 teams made it, and that was it. Yeah. Shit. All right, fellas. But all right, hey, Chad, keep it easy, man. Where you at, right. Chad? I'm, I'm, I moved back to Atlanta. I'm back in the ATL. Okay, okay. You up there with uh, – what's the receiver that's up there? The oh, actually, I, actually, BJ came – I was at breakfast one morning, and BJ and his family came up to me. At the, hey, Bob, at you got fair. anything else to talk about? Or okay, cool, cool. Yeah, well, um, we appreciate you guys coming on. Um <laughs> Now, what, what were you going to say, Mark? I'm just making sure everything's good. You guys all right? Everything's good? Any other yeah, questions? I was just going to wrap it up. We appreciate you guys coming on. It was, it was fun um, taking a look back on that era, not just uh, the Stanford win, uh, but we'd love to have you guys back on sometime down the road. Ho- hopefully, hey. we'll have a football season, and uh, we'll, we'll have you guys back on during the season. Yeah, we'll talk, 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 talk some pirate football. Uh, go Pirates. Yeah, we're all here. All our teammates are here. Go Pirates. I just wish uh, some of the other guys, like uh, Emac and those guys, could have got on. I'm not sure what happened, but uh, those guys are all part of what we do, how we won, and, and what our team was. Darren and David are, are, are guys that just – everyone just made sure we took care of everything, and we're just so happy that uh, we got to be a piece of history in, in the, the Pirates, and uh, hopefully – we know in the next couple of years they're going to get back on the winning, so it's going to be fun and that to pick one. Absolutely, Mark. And uh, speaking of talking some pirate football, uh, you guys, if you can't watch it live, um, check out the archive tomorrow. It will be on YouTube, Facebook. Um, we will have Coach Mike Houston on at 2 o'clock tomorrow. So um, if, you, if you're around a computer, your phone, uh, you, can, you can chime in, uh, ask a question to Coach Houston. And we'll have that tomorrow at 2 o'clock right here. In your case, uh, 11 o'clock, Mark. But that's him and David Hart. They both in California. Yep. Sorry, you too, David. Yeah, I get you. I get you. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but no, guys, we appreciate it. You guys take care. Thanks, Thank guys, you. very much. We certainly Thanks, wish. Dave. Thanks, Thanks Mark, too, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. All right, see, yeah, y'all, see y'all soon. Hey, hey. Go Pirates. Uh, Tell Houston if he if Houston is recruiting on the West Coast, just let me know. I I might be able to help. We definitely will, man. All right, sounds good, David. Appreciate you guys very much. We enjoyed it. Wow, what a night, Bubba! That was a lot of fun, and I know that. Uh, sorry, guys, for the technical difficulties. That's what it's like live. If you've ever everybody and. Uh, Emac, man, we love you, man. And we're gonna have to. What we need to do is get Emac maybe on one on one. Yeah. Um, because I miss. He is hilarious. I, uh, I actually, uh, he doesn't remember, but I played softball in a softball classroom, and he it gave me a hard time because I was running slow. But I can't help it. I mean, I'm not Emac, you know. Um, but those guys are very special to me, and um, it was a huge night uh, to have them on. And uh, like Bubba said, tomorrow is gonna be very special as we have. Coach Mike Houston, it's a huge honor for him to come on with us, and we're going to have him on at 2 p.m. Eastern. So wherever you are around the world, it's 2 p.m. Eastern. We won't have to start doing all the time differences. You'll figure it out. You're smart people because you're a pirate, and you love the pirates. And Bubba, see, like you like my shirt? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. I, they always give me a hard time, like I don't wear pirate stuff. So I want to make sure tonight, a very special night, we do that. And Bubba, I know we got a lot of programming, but folks, uh, just keep it right here, and uh, we'll always, Bubba and I and uh, Kyle try really hard to promote as much as we can about what's coming up. So just keep it right here. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed this. It'll be in the archive on Facebook Live, so all the uh, that team, and maybe we can get Coach Logan, and uh, we'll get we'll have to get Mark Crandall back on. Marcus is a, a friend of the podcast, a great guy right down the road for me, living in Robertsonville again, and I've been living in Williamston. It's like back, you know, no place like home, so. Bubba, man, thank you so much for your hard work. I know you put a lot of hard work in this, uh, getting the guys. And, um, folks, we're going to keep doing this. 
uh, probably like once a week or every other week, something like that. Yeah. Um, so if any suggestions, Bubba, I was going to say to them before we wrap it up, if there's a game that they want to put in the comments at Facebook or if there's games they'd like to see or maybe former players they want to get together, we'd love to have them on. This is uh, not only for – uh, pirate players, obviously, but they're fans. You want to come on also um, as far as, you know, making comments, uh, do that. And also there's some games that maybe they don't they don't know about uh, that they would like to uh, have on. We'd love to have them. Yeah, absolutely. Like you're saying, uh, take a look at the ticker right now. Uh, if you have any suggestions. Hey, Larry as far, Shannon. As far as guests. Yes, uh, uh, shout out Larry Shannon. Okay. Um, yeah, Larry, we appreciate you tuning in. Um, you'll be joining us as well as Snoop Wallace and Marvin Burke. Um, we'll talk to you guys on Thursday, um, May the 14th, as we'll take a look back at that 1996 Miami game that we referenced tonight when the Pirates went down. Where's to, the towel? Uh, where's the towel? Yeah. When the Pirates, where's the towel? Maybe, Larry, if you have – hey, Larry, if you have the – sorry for the lag, Bub. If you have a to the towel, Larry, please bring uh, have that ready for it that you can pull out for us. That would be awesome. Um, but anyway, Bubba, thank you again, man. I appreciate you so much. I know you put a lot of hard work, including uh, today on that on this very show and uh, kind of like her hurting cats, all our schedules trying to, uh, for sure. Once again, Bubba, um, thanks again for your hard work on Mike Houston. We'll have him tomorrow at two o'clock. Folks, thank you so much. And we'll get out of here. Good night and go Pirates.